what I spent I lost what I possessed is left to others what I gave away remains with me a brother's suffering claim a brother's pity the most skillful flattery is to let a person talk on and be a listener young men soon give and soon forget afrans old age is slow in both knowledge is indeed that which next to virtue truly and essentially raises one man above another one of the most important but one of the most difficult thing for a powerful mind is to be its own master cleanliness may be defined to be emblem of purity of mind a man's first care should be to avoid the reproaches of his own heart no one is more cherished in this world than someone who lightens the burden of another cheerfulness is the best promoter of health and is friendly to the mind as to the body courage is the thing all goes if courage goes the greatest sweetness of human life is friendship they were a people so primitive they did not know how to get money except by working for it jealousy is that pain which a man feels from the apprehension that he is not equally beloved by the person whom he entirely loves nothing is more gratifying to the mind of man than powers or dominion it is only in perfection that complains of what is imperfect the more perfect we are the more gentle and quiet we become towards the defects of others modesty is not only an ornament but also a god to virtue there is no defense against criticism except obscurity a man should always consider how much he has more than he wants what sculpture is to a block of marble education is to the human soul content thyself to be obscurely good there is nothing that makes it way more directly into the soul than beauty one should take good care not to grow too wise for so great a pleasure of life as laughter nothing is more amiable than true modesty and nothing more contemptible than the false the one god's virtue the other betrays it health and cheerfulness naturally back at each other there is not a more pleasing exercise of the mind than gratitude it is accompanied with such an inward satisfaction that the duty is sufficiently rewarded by the performance an honor
honest man that is not quite sober has nothing to fear true benevolence or compassion extends itself through the whole of existence and sympathizes with the distress of every creature capable of sensation i will indulge my sorrows and give way to all the pangs and fury of despair good nature will always supply the absence of beauty but beauty cannot supply the absence of good nature misery and ignorance are always the cause of great evils misery is easily excited to anger and ignorance soon yields to perfidious counsels the hours of a wise man are lengthened by his ideas which is expose a man to pride and luxury and a foolish elation of heart the voice of reason is more to be regarded than the bent of any present inclination since inclination will at length come over to reason thou we can have force reason to comply with inclination look what a little vain does to we are pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall the important question is not what will yield to man a few scattered pleasures but what will render his life happy on the whole amount riches are apt to betray a man into arrogance men may change their climate but they cannot change their nature a man that goes out a fool cannot write or sail himself into common sense how is it possible for those who are men of honor in their persons thus to become notorious liars in their party in private conversation between intimate friends the wisest men very often talk like the weakest for indeed the talking with a friend is nothing else but thinking aloud let freedom never perish in your hands there is nothing which strengthens faith more than the observance of morality admiration is a very short lived passion that immediately decays upon growing familiar with its object unless it still be fed with fresh discoveries and kept alive by a new perpetual succession of miracles rising up to its view the man who will live above his present circumstances is in great danger of soon living beneath them good nature is more agreeable in conversation than wit and gives a certain air to the countenance which is more amiable than beauty The pleasantest part of a man's life is generally that which passes in courtship provided his passion be sincere and the party beloved kind with discretion love desire hope all the pleasing emotions of the soul rise in the pursuit better to die 10000 deaths 
then want my honors. Many actions calculated to procure fame are not conducive to ultimate happiness. The modern cannot reach their beauties but can avoid their imperfections. A just and reasonable modesty does not only recommend eloquence but sets off every great talent which a man can be possessed of. Good breeding shows itself most where to an ordinary eye it appears the least.